Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. So we're here at Cades Cove Campground in the Smoky Mountains National Park. I will say this is one of our favorite places to camp. We've only been here once in the past, but it's just about all the wildlife and stuff here at the park. Now we do avoid this whole general area, you know, quite a bit. It's about an hour and a half, two hours from our house, but there's a lot of tourism up here and you know, that can kind of get on your nerves. So. Occasionally we will come up to the like Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area. I actually like this area better uh, just because there's not as many people crammed in here. Now if you go over to the general store there's going to be five million people in there because it's the only store like within 10 miles. They do have a restaurant over there and there's a little bit of Wi-Fi uh, in the pavilion right behind there if you need to get a text out or something. But we're here in site B4. Now we do have a whole video on this campground from a previous visit and I'll link that right up here in the corner and down in the description. Now that gives all of our preferred sites, you know, they do have it split into a couple different loops and there's one loop where you can use generators and there's one loop where generators aren't allowed. So that's kind of important to keep in mind based on your preferences and if you're going to have a tent or RV or anything like that. So we're here in B4. I do like this site overall. And I think I had it on one of our better sites list on that video. Now you can see around me, there's quite a bit of wooded area. There is a camper over here on the other side of, it's about 15 feet of decently thick wood. So you have a little bit of privacy here. And I really like that. The downside to this site here at B4 was getting into the site. Essentially with the uh, 30 foot camper, Right where the truck lines up, there's a little ditch there and there's a concrete barrier on both sides, uh, kind of protecting the culvert. And so because of that, and so you don't run off the road in the ditch because it has a decent drop there. So because of that, it was kind of hard to get in here. I actually had to go all the way around because I tried a couple of times. I couldn't quite make the turn. I had to go around again, uh, around the block and come back just so I could scoot the camper over about another foot to the right. Now there is one tree that's kind of right on the corner and that's kind of a, you know, something you have to watch out for too because you're having to turn like right, right near that tree to get the camper back here. I didn't have any issues with that. I did have an awesome neighbor next door during this stay. He actually uh, s said he could help me back in, but I told him, you know, I prefer to do that myself because I get all nervous when people try to help. And so, but we did spend quite a bit of time talking to them. They're really nice people and maybe they'll be watching this video. However, I will say that, you know, the reason that we come here is for the wildlife. You know, they have a loop here. It takes, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to drive around, maybe even longer. It's a lot of traffic, but it's a great experience, especially if you've never did it. Now the better times to go were early in the morning and later in the evening as that's when you usually see wildlife about anywhere where you are and you're trying to see, you know, animals in the wild is going to be at like dusk and at dawn so when they seem to be more active. We did try our Instant Connect binoculars here. It's on, uh, you know, it's a directional antenna on top of it's either a 20 or 25 foot flagpole. I thought we might be able to get a signal in that way. I wasn't too hopeful, but I did set everything up and do all the testing on it. And I did not pick up one single cell tower of any kind back here because I knew there wasn't any service back here, but I thought with that, I might be able to get a little hint of something in, but I didn't. So the only service that you're gonna be able to get in the area around here is if you go up to the pavilion, uh, you can get on the NPS guest, the National Park Service guest Wi-Fi, and you can, you know, get a text message out or, you know, check up on your, your daily news or whatever, but it's not the fastest internet. And I don't, it was kind of weird because I went to the park office because it was labeled NPS and I figured it was there, but the, you like lost the whole signal when you got over there. And then you walk back to like the store and it starts picking up a little bit. I asked them and they said it's the strongest in the little pavilion area where they rent the bicycles. So I walked back there and yeah, it's, it's uh, got pretty decent service back there. So let's talk about the uh, loop around the wildlife loop here that we did last night. I probably am going to do it a little later on today, see if I find anything else, take some pictures of. But with our uh, zoom lens, I got some pretty good pictures yesterday. We ran across five or six deer, 
three bears. One of them was climbing up and down a tree as well as a couple of turkey. Uh, so that's not too bad for an hour drive around the loop there. We were able to, you know, find all those things. Now, you know, it's only one lane of traffic in there. And anytime somebody sees a bear, you know, because the traffic just stops. So we were sitting in traffic for a while. I figured the bears would be moved on by the time we got up there. But we got up there and we saw the three bear. Um, you know, out west they call it like a buffalo jam when somebody sees a buffalo or they're in the road and it stops traffic here. I guess you call it a bear jam. But anyway, you know, it's, it's a nice area and they see quite a few bears. They said that there's been a lot of bears here in the actual campground as well recently. And so they have a very strict rule about, you know, keeping your food up in a hard sided vehicle, whether that's your car, if you're tent camping or in the camper, uh, but they have very strict rules about that. They actually make you sign a piece of paper saying that you understand that. And then they drive by and check on you, you know, a couple of times a day to make sure you're not leaving food out. So this was just a quick trip with the family as a getaway this weekend. I was gonna do like a, a vlog style video this week because we already had the campground video, but we really didn't do a whole lot. We just kind of used this time as a little R&R &R, and it was nice. And I am gonna do the wildlife loop again tonight. Also on that loop, you know, there's a couple of, there is a guide along app for this whole area now. We downloaded that this time. It really didn't tell us anything on this Cades Cove loop that we didn't know already, but I'll put the link for my guide along. I'm an affiliate with them down in the description. If you've never been here, it might be helpful for you. They also go out, you know, into uh, all the way out to Cherokee with their tour. We hadn't done any of that stuff yet. And we probably will in the future. But I will say overall, I really like their, their tours. But like I said, I didn't learn anything new on this one. But there are three churches along that loop, three older churches that you can walk through and they have some older cemeteries. Um, some of those markings were a little interesting because you could tell it was like uh, during the Civil War because they actually make some comments on the gravestones about that. And then there are also a few like cabins and homesteads in the area where you can stop and take a look. And there's two roads that are two-way traffic that split the loop up. That way, if you like want to go back and see something that you, you kind of glanced over and you want to go back and spend some more time or you want to try your luck at seeing more wildlife on a second turnaround, you don't have to go all the way around the loop before you cut back in. So all in all, like I said, it's one of our favorite areas. It's just nice and relaxing. But you, you know, especially if you're RV camping, you gotta know that you're gonna be dry camping if you stay up here. No power. Um, you can't have a generator in Loop B, and no, no sewer or anything like that. They do have a dump station. But you know, if you got a generator, you got you know decent lithium setup, should be fine. We've only had to use our generator about an hour a day to keep the batteries topped off. Obviously, our solar's not doing a whole lot with all this tree cover. But that's why we have our generator so we can use it to charge our batteries up when we need to. And it's working out great. It's been like 70, 75 degrees. So we've just been leaving, you know, the windows open and the screen door open, the vents open. And it's been a decent temperature inside the camper without being too hot. You know, if you come in the middle of summer, you're gonna have to worry about that more as far as the heat. But I just love this place and it's only like 15 or $20 a night to stay. But like I say, there's not any electricity or hookups or anything like that. Over at the store over here, they do have some decent food. It's pretty premium priced. It's the only thing that you're gonna find within like 20 miles because everything else is down in Townsend. You'll have to go down there. And it takes 20, 30 minutes to get down there um, each way there and back. And so you're probably not gonna wanna make that trip too many times. But if you stay up here, like, like I say, there is a, like a little restaurant in the store here. I think they're only open nine to five and they got like cheeseburgers and pizzas and hot dogs, stuff like that. And ice cream, the ice cream's a big seller up here because everybody gets all hot in the summertime. They do some hiking and stuff and then they find the ice cream. But it's, it's like a madhouse going in that store because there's four million people in there every time you go in there. But that's all for this week's video, guys. Thanks for watching till the end. And thanks for being part of our family. Be sure to join us for next week's video. Dear 
not forget to hit that subscribe button.